I love June Goff. To me, she's one of the most soft-hearted, hard-shelled dames in film noir. Susan Hayward gives a performance that's both poignant and sexy, disproving the commonly held notion that women in noir always conform to good girl, bad girl archetypes. June is the opposite of a femme fatale, but she is as sexy as the best of them. The one story director Harold Klerman loved to recount from the making of this film concerned a censor from the production code office showing up unannounced on the set. He told Klerman that Hayward's costume had to be modified to keep too much of her bosom from being exposed. Now, Klerman was adamant that the bodice be unchanged, arguing that there has to be something pleasant about this picture. Since Cornell Woolrich's stories are all about bizarre coincidences, here's one for you. In 1929, First National Pictures adapted Woolrich's first novel, Children of the Ritz, which led him to Hollywood for a couple of years. Now, his work didn't amount to much, but he did marry Gloria Blackton, daughter of silent film pioneer J. Stuart Blackton, the creator of Vitagraph Studios. Coincidentally, a major contributor to Deadline at Dawn, and noir in general, got his start in the business as Blackton's chauffeur. Now, that would be cameraman Nick Musaraka, who probably had no idea when shooting this film that it was written by his former boss's son-in-law. Well, I should say ex-son-in-law. Woolrich's marriage, one of the most cursed ever, fell apart when Gloria Blackton discovered a diary detailing her husband's sexual exploits with sailors on the L.A. docks. Disgraced, Woolrich returned to New York, where he lived with his mother for the rest of his closeted but creatively prolific life. Naive straight shooters. Those were the stock and trade of actor Bill Williams, a New York native who'd breaststroked his way into the movie business as a professional swimmer. Now, RKO had him under a stock contract when he landed the lead in this picture as the soft-skulled Swabby. Should I call the police and have it done with? It's your problem, son, not mine. You're much smarter than me, that's why I asked. What should I do? Cut and run now. The previous year, he'd married fellow studio player Barbara Hale, who'd go on to eventual fame as Della Street on the Perry Mason TV series. And one of their three kids, William Cott, the spitting image of his old man, became a star in his own right in the 1970s, appearing in films like Carrie, Big Wednesday, and the TV show The Greatest American Hero. Now, years ago, Barbara Hale was my guest at a film noir festival where I screened a Cornell Woolrich double bill, The Window, in which she played Billy Driscoll's mom, and Deadline at Dawn. And Barbara gave a terrific, warm-hearted interview following The Window, and afterwards, we settled in to watch Deadline at Dawn, which she hadn't seen since its premiere in 1946. Well, her late husband wasn't on screen a minute before Barbara broke down in tears and had to be escorted to the green room. I really love that guy, she kept saying. Bill Williams and Barbara Hale had one of the strongest marriages ever made in Hollywood. Now, today's film featured a pair of good-hearted souls who help each other through a long, dark night. Next week, you will meet two of the most depraved and despicable characters in the history of the movies. And remember, join the Noir Conversation on our Noir Alley Facebook page. In the meantime, I hear the whistle blowing.